Hello, everyone, and welcome to Roll With The Punches. Today is Saturday. We are here, excited to learn new things. Today, we're going to be learning pivots, which is a new footwork technique. Uh, it can be pretty challenging, so we are focusing solely on that one today. Not going to be a lot of long combos. It's going to be focused on the feet. Uh, it's going to be a good test of your boxing stance as well, uh, because if your boxing stance is not balanced, these are going to be much harder. So it's kind of a good test to see where your footwork is and adding something additionally on top of it. How's everyone in chat doing today? Welcome. Thank you for joining. As always, if it's your first time, welcome as well. Ah, still getting a little stretched out. Hopefully you guys are warmed up and ready to go. Oh, hopefully we're live, all the audio and everything's okay. We'll do pivots, uh, and then for a critical hit, we're going to focus on the shoulders today, which should be fun. And we're going to try some meditation at the end of it. At the end of our cool down today. Ah. <sighs> Does anyone have any questions for anything that we covered previously before we get started? Hello, David. Sassy Dora, thanks for coming. Are you all good? Good, good. Happy to hear. Oh, should really be warming up the legs because they're going to get the workout today. Got my knee brace on. Pivot, sir. One of the things where my knee still affects, uh, I dislocated my knee almost a year ago now. Um, it's back to mostly recovered, but pivots are one of the things where I feel a little bit of pain in the kneecap and uh, it doesn't, like the pain isn't bad, it's just kind of reminds my brain that something happened and it gets me out of the technique in the moment, so it's one still one that I'm sort of building back up into. Hey, punching bag, awesome. I love, love me a heavy bag. Great stress reliever, good for developing power. For sure, make sure you're wrapping good. Nice gloves for whenever you're punching. Easy to hurt yourself, for sure. <sighs> ah. Well, I'm about ready to get into it, I think. We'll be pivoting to the Outside and the inside is the terminology that I'm going to use because if you're southpaw or if you're orthodox, uh, clockwise and counterclockwise will be the opposite. So when we're pivoting, if we're pivoting towards our lead foot, okay, that's going to be pivoting outside. And if you're an orthodox, that is going to be clockwise. But if you're a southpaw, that's going to be counterclockwise. But it's still towards your lead. So lead is outside. And the opposite for the inside. First roll with the punches stream. So happy you're here. Um, some things might be a little advanced for you today. But all you really need for this one is the stance itself. So if you take a step back, your front foot can be either pointed in the front or slightly at an angle towards the inside. Back leg from somewhere between 90 degrees to 45. Weight on the balls of the feet, knees bent. Make sure a line can go through. Um, a good way to check it is the heel of your back foot 
If it comes straight, it hits the toe of your front foot. It's just sort of your basic stance. And bending your knees is key. Bending your knees even more is going to be even more key today. All right. Well, let's get started. Nope, I gotta do this. That one. And then this one. Okay, cool. So, pivots. Why do you want to pivot? <clears throat> So pivots are often a defensive move. You don't want someone pushing you back in a straight line. If I'm coming after you with my punches, just straight at you, and you're just retreating straight, eventually you're going to run out of room. Uh, so pivots is a good way to create an angle and to get away. Now you can use it offensively as well, or you can like pivot out, get an angle on them, and then come in directly. But the basic idea is to create an angle, to not just move in a straight line. So in order to do that, we can either pivot to the outside or the inside. I find the outside to be a lot easier, and one you'll probably be using more. But the basic idea of it is if you are in your stance, there's sort of three steps to it. The first step is we drop our weight a little more. Now you might already be low enough in order to make this work, but chances are you're probably not. Uh, and that lower center of balance is going to help you keep your balance as you make this movement. Now weight are on the balls of the feet. You don't have to be up on your toes. Both heels don't have to be off the ground, but the weight itself has to be on the balls of the feet. And we drop down a little more. Okay, that's going to be step one. And then the next step is the pivot. So we're going to be pushing off with our back foot, and we're going to be going to the outside. So if you are orthodox, that is clockwise. If you're southpaw, that is counterclockwise. But we're pushing off with our rear foot, and today we're going to be working in 45 degrees. I'm sorry, we're going to be working in 90 degrees. So if you can think of like the cardinal directions on a compass, we're going to be hitting each of those every time we pivot. Now, you don't have to pivot 90 degrees, but that's just the drills that we're going to be doing today. Once you start to get a feel with this, practicing 180 degree pivots is very nice because once you get those down, the 90 degrees is nothing. <clears throat> but today, 90 degrees. So weight on the balls of the feet, drop the weight down, pushing off with the back leg to the outside. And as we do that, we're leading with our front heel. That's pivoting. It's squishing that bug into the ground. And it's pivoting around to our final point as we come into our stance, OK? Like so. So you should be in a good stance when you end. That's probably not going to happen right off. That's something that you're just going to have to get a feel for. But it's about keeping the balance. And that drop, getting a little lower, really helps with that. OK? That's going on the outside. Does anyone have any questions before we try to drill that 10 times? Shoes make a big difference with this and the surface that you're working on. If you've got, if you're working on carpet or something, that can be really slick. Um, so you want to go slow and be careful. This is a nice grippy floor. I've got boxing boots on. So just make sure you're careful and not getting too much speed. It's about feeling the balance and getting the technique down today. Okay? So we're going to drill this. Uh, once we get to the rounds, we're going to be adding some punches into this as well. But for now, we're just working on the pivots. We're going to try to do a pivot to the outside 10 times. 
Remember, 45 degrees, so you're in ending at the different points of the compass. Bend the legs. Bend down. Push off with the back foot. Pivot with the front and end in a good stance. You can check your stance like we did at the beginning. Make sure everything's good before you move on. So the front foot, yeah. So the front foot, we're not stepping right now. We'll step later and do pivots. But for right now, on this pivot on the outside, we're not stepping. So the foot itself is in the same location. It's just pointing in a different direction now. It's pointing towards our opponent who has moved in and maybe moved past us. Okay. Later, we're going to add steps before the pivots, but for now, we're just pivoting into place until we can feel that motion, feel that balance. Yeah, barefoot is fine. Um, we learned pivots in karate. That was all barefoot stuff. And again, depending on your surface, you might tear up your feet, but toughening your feet isn't the worst thing in the world either. But just be aware that if you haven't already trained a lot with bare feet, um, this can give you blisters. So be prepared for that if you're doing it barefooted. All right, so let's try this 10 times. So dropping down, pushing with the back foot, pivoting around, leading with the heel, the front heel, and landing in a good stance. Do that 10 times. Around the clock. Let's go. Way on the balls of the feet. Drop pivot. That's one. Drop, pivot. Two. Drop, pivot. Three. Drop, pivot. Four. Drop, pivot. Five. Drop, pivot. Six. Drop, Pivot, seven, drop, pivot, eight, balls of the feet, drop, pivot, nine, try to keep your hands up, drop, pivot, ten, okay? So that's our basic outside pivot without a step. We'll add a step into it later, but that motion is going to be the same for any of the outside pivots that we're doing. <clears throat> any questions on that before we go to the inside pivots? So we're going to be learning. The inside pivot is going to work a little differently. Uh, the first one we're going to learn is almost more of a step than a pivot. There's pivoting going on. But because of the nature of the balance, and the fact that if your opponent is right in front of you, you still see me here. If I'm pivoting just like we did on the outside on the inside, I'm going to come really close and maybe even hit them as I'm pivoting. So we have two different ways to sort of circumvent that, which I will show in a second. Don't really have the space for this one. I've got a really small area to work in. I understand. You should only need about this much space, I would say. You don't have to take any steps or anything. <clears throat> any other questions before we move to the inside pivots? Practicing the pivots also lets you know how conditioned your legs are because getting that extra bit of depth into it, you can start to feel that. And the pivot itself is not the easiest motion in the world. So pivot drills are another good way to sort of develop the legs as well. Okay, so we're going to go inside pivots this time. So if you are orthodox, that's going to be counterclockwise. 
And if you're southpaw, that is going to be clockwise. All right, so <clears throat> for the inside, so we're not going to do the same motion. So I'm going to show you um, the wrong motion for this for right now. So it would be sort of like that sort of thing, right? If we just applied the same principles to the outside of the inside, it would kind of look like that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to step with our rear leg to the final position, okay? So if I'm going 90 degrees, I step to where my rear leg would end at that position. So I'm going to be going rear side and probably forward. So rear side and forward. And instead of a pivot, it's kind of more of a shift, like so. And I'm bringing, I'm stepping wider than my normal stance. So when I'm turning, my lead foot comes in a little. So now I've avoided that problem of being in front of my opponent. Now I'm not getting right next to them as I'm pivoting, okay? So this one works a little differently. Now once we add a step with the lead foot and then pivot on the inside, that's gonna be more of the same style pivot that we were doing before. But this one is a step with the rear leg in a little wider than our, nor our normal stance. And let me actually get the balance. So it's kind of like that. Okay? So I'm stepping where I'm going to end. And as I step the front foot back, it turns to face my new direction. Okay? Legs are bent the whole time, but again, you start with a slight drop, like so. So it's kind of a little hop, although I always have one foot connected to the ground. But it kind of works like this. All right, that's the first one we're going to learn. We'll get more of an actual pivot once we start adding steps. Pivot to a ball on the non-lead foot. So I'm just stepping. I'm stepping, and my back foot doesn't change, if that's what you're asking. It's only the front one that changes. It's not really pivoting. It's just stepping back and coming into position. This one is a little more complicated, like I said before. Outside pivots, for me, feel much more natural. This requires a little more, uh, an additional motion, right? But this one, I think, is still a little easier than when we're going to step oh, nope, and pivot on the inside, which we'll get to in a second. So let's break it down one more time. We bend a little deeper, get that center of gravity lower. We step with the rear foot 45 degrees to the final position. If you want, you can take some exercise tape or something, tape it to the floor. So as you're in each of these positions, you can just get into your stance. You can kind of walk yourself over and take the time to mark where the ball of your foot is going to be on each of these movements to give yourself a target. Because you step to that position with the, with the rear foot, you bring the front foot back, and you change its direction. It's not, so it's not squishing the bug like this 
because I stepped further than my normal stance. If I just did that, I'd be a little wide, okay? I need to pull the front foot back into my normal width. The balance on the rear foot at the end of the inside pivot. So when you say the end, so at this point, balance is on the front foot because I have to step with this one, right? I'm pushing off here. And then weight shifts a little to the back as I step back like this. And then I'm just in a normal stance at that point. It's just a normal stance with... I mean, you can go 50-50, you can go like 60-40, wherever your normal balance is in your normal stance at the end. I find it weird how I'm right-handed but can switch stances with ease. Sometimes I prefer a southpaw stance. Yeah, I'm, um, I don't know if I would say I'm ambidextrous. Maybe ambisinister is better. I'm not particularly good with either of them for some things. But it's kind of the same for me, where I, I, can, I can switch, and some things feel better in one stance, and some things feel better in another stance. It was especially true with kicks back in karate. But yeah, um, like a future, a future lecture will work on switch stances as well. Okay. So let's try to do that 10 times. And then we're going to do some pivots with steps. Then we'll have the boxing rounds. And we'll go from there. All right, so let's get into our stance. Weight on the balls of the feet. We drop down just a little bit. It takes just time and practice to feel where that position is for you. Because you might already be there. You might be a low fighter. You might not have to drop but probably you need to drop. So we drop, balls of the feet, we step with our rear foot where we're ending, and we bring our lead foot back into position, turning it as we bring it back. So we're facing our opponent again in our normal boxing stance. Let's try it. Here we go. One, two, three, Four, five, slow down a little bit, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, stepping a little further than our stance with our rear foot. We have to compensate with the front foot as we turn. <clears throat> so that's basic pivoting to the outside, basic pivoting to the inside. Next, we're going to add a step before we pivot. Give you guys a second to ask any questions as I kick out my legs, give them a rest. Let's so work them hard today. Okay, so now we're going to add a step. We're going to work on the outside first. We're going to add a step first and then pivot to the outside. So you can imagine, do I have a good, do I have a good visual aid? This is pretty good. So if I have a, a pad, maybe like a soccer ball size, you can sort of imagine that on the ground. Oh, back. I'm not stepping very much, but I'm going to step sort of outside of it. 
So forward and outside. I mean, you can step a bunch of different a bunch of different directions and do this. But for now, I'm going to come from the lower right hand side of this to sort of over to here. So it's a small step, but it is forward and away. And then we're just going to do that pivot like we did before. So we sort of drop our weight on the step. So we don't have to step and then drop our weight and then pivot around. It's a step, drop the weight with the step and pivot around just like before. <clears throat> so this gets us out of the way a little bit more. So if I do it on the bag, you can see if I just do a normal pivot where I'm going to end up here, <laughs> kind of, you can kind of see that. Uh, maybe like this. It's better. Right, normal pivot here. If I step pivot, now I'm here. So a little bit closer towards them. All right, so we bend our knees, we step forward and out with the lead leg, weight on it, pivot, okay? Let's try it 10 times. Get down your stance, hands up, chin down, and step and pivot. Okay, to the outside. So that is clockwise if you're orthodox, counterclockwise if you're southpaw. Ready? And step and pivot. That's two. Step and pivot. Three. Step, pivot. Four. Remember, lowering with that step. Step, pivot. Five. Step, pivot, six. Step, pivot, seven. Step, pivot, eight. Check your stance. Make sure you can throw any punch at the end of that pivot, okay? Step, pivot, eight. Step, pivot, nine. Step, pivot, ten, okay? So that's stepping with the outside pivot. That one doesn't feel too bad, I feel like. If you can get the normal pivot down, it's almost the same. And that step can be in different places, right? I can go way over here and do the same sort of thing, just way to the side and do it. But for now, just a little step like that into the pivot, okay? The outside does feel more natural for most people, me included, for sure. But maybe this will feel a little better for you for the inside pivot, because this one is gonna be more of a true pivot, okay? The front foot is gonna be pivoting in the other direction. So instead of forward into the outside, we're going to be coming to the inside instead, okay? To the inside. Dropping down, like before, so dropping on that step, and then we pivot this way. Like so. So this one is a true pivot but we're stepping first, like so. So I'll show you on the bag, a little tricky because I have the leg right there. But if I'm throwing my punches and I don't step and I pivot, I'm touching the bag. If I do step and pivot, 
Now I'm at a position where I'm good. To, I'm a good uh, position to strike. So if I were to just pivot, I'm in close, which, you know, you can throw a hook if you want to pivot and be in close. But if you want to pivot and be at full extension range, you got to make that step. And it feels, this one might feel a little more natural for you. So step in and pivot. So step, lower, lower the weight. We're pushing off with that back leg and our heel as it pivots is leading us through it. Like so, okay? We don't step and then twist around. The heel leads, like so. You wanna stay low for the entire thing. You don't wanna be low and then come up like this. There's no jump. It's, I am low, I'm low for the entire pivot, and then maybe I come back up a little, or I stay down. Okay, so that's gonna be the inside with a step. So let's try that 10 times if no one has any questions. Pivoting on our opponents, getting the angle. We're coming at them from a different direction and we're not letting them push us in a straight line. Shake it out one last time and then we're gonna do this 10 times. So in our stance, balls of the feet, we step inside, drop down, push off with the back leg and pivot with that front foot on the inside and end in a good stance. We shouldn't have to adjust our front foot again after this. So unlike before, where we're bringing the foot back, in this one it should be able to stay because we've already taken that step, right? We've already, we've done the step at the beginning instead of at the end. So we're already in position to go. All right? So let's get that going. Down on a stance, and we step, drop the weight around for one. Two. Three, four, gotta watch out for that leg. Five, so stepping in, weight on the front, pushing off with the rear, pivoting around. Six, sounds right. Oop, nope, forgot to step. Seven, eight, Nine, 10, 10 times around. So that feels a little more like the outside pivot to me because you're still doing that same sort of motion. It's not the step of the other one, but they both have their uses. All right, good stuff. Let's go ahead and get our music on as we start to get into our boxing rounds, which are gonna utilize what we've learned today. Everything features a pivot. Okay, so way better, awesome. All right, so first round is just gonna be short steps and then pivot. So you can pivot any way you want. If you're level one, you can pivot all one way for one minute and all another way for the other minute. Um, you can go back and forth in between, it's up to you. But we're just gonna be taking short steps in any direction, right? Imagining we're either matching our opponent or our opponent is matching us. We're trying to keep that sweet distance away from them until we're ready. And as we're taking our small steps, at some point, we pivot, okay? And then back to small steps, 
Try to keep our legs engaged the entire time. Always moving. And it can be any of the pivots that you want. You can just step forward and then pivot. You can have a step to the outside and pivot. Step to the inside and pivot. Or step with that back leg first and pivot that way. All right? Keep your knees bent. Light on your feet. Weight on the balls. Just small steps. Use the space you got. Occasionally throw in a pivot, okay? Make sure you're balanced after that pivot because in the future rounds, we're gonna be throwing punches. I'll go ahead and go over the future rounds right now just so you have an idea of what to expect. But the first round is just gonna be short steps and then pivots. Second round, we're gonna pivot off from a series of punches. So it's gonna be a one, two, and then a pivot to the outside, okay? One, two, pivot to the outside. And if you want, as soon as you come off that pivot, you throw another one, two. It's a good way to make sure you have your balance after the pivot or just starting out. One, two, pivot, reset, make sure you're good. And then one, two, pivot, pivot to the outside. Do that the whole round. All right, next round is gonna be a two, three pivot to the inside. So a two, three, so eating with that ending, with that lead hook. Then we pivot to the inside. So we either step with the front foot or we step with the back foot. We're gonna pivot on the inside. And the last round is just gonna combine those. So it would be a one, two, pivot to the outside, two, three, pivot to the inside, all right? And you can mix that up, but that's gonna be the last round, last round of the pivots. After that, we might do a freestyle round, we'll see. But that's gonna be it. First round, just short steps and pivots. All right, you're gonna feel it. If you stay down your stance like you're supposed to, you're gonna feel it up here in your legs. That's no bad thing. It's what we want. All right, I think we're ready. I'm gonna get a drink. And then we'll go. Kick those legs out. Boxing, let's go. Short steps plus pivot. So in your stance, you can maybe throw some gazelle hops in there, but some short steps. And then if I step inside with my front foot, I pivot to the inside at the end of my short steps. You got four different pivots, so try to use them all. It's good to practice while moving backwards as well because that's normally when you're using them. If I'm coming back because you're coming in, and then all of a sudden, bam, now in a different direction. Try to go that full 45 degrees for each one, at least while we're training. Move around, always be moving, and then pivot. You can do the same one multiple times. You can mix it up. Go back and forth. Never stop moving. Level one's already taking a break. I forgot this timer. We'll get it for the next round. I can see it on the screen. Keep moving. Pivots. You can make them quick or you can really focus on the balance and the technique. Stepping on the inside, pivoting to the inside. Stepping the outside, pivoting to the outside. 20 seconds till level one comes back in. Here we go. It's not easy taking these short steps, stopping and starting, then adding pivots on top of that you can get your legs tired in a hurry. Five seconds, come on.
Here we go. Level one, back in. Level two, take a break. Keep those hands up. Chin down. We're not throwing punches. But that doesn't mean we can be lax. Balls of the feet. Stay loose. And throw some quick ones in there. If you start to feel the balance. Here we go. 20 seconds till level two takes a break. Keep it up. Keep your legs engaged the whole time. All right. Don't worry about punches, but keep those hands up. We're almost there. Time. All right. Make sure I get this timer for the next round. So next round, jab, straight rear, pivot. Pivoting to the outside. Shake those legs out. Give them the break they need. Because we're going again. You can uh, have short steps in there as well if you want. But we're just pivoting off from punches. Okay? Starting about 20 seconds. It's one, two, pivot to the outside. Almost there. Start my timer. Deep breath before we start. Three, two, one. All right, it's gonna be one, two, pivot to the outside. All right, one, two, pivot. You can take that step if you want afterwards but it's a little trickier this time because, because of the two, our weight is already on our front foot. So we sort of almost fall into the step and then pivot because our weight is already here. So it's sort of a falling motion almost in order to pivot off from it if you wanna do it off the step, okay? But you can also just pivot in place as well. You can try to work both. Just don't actually fall. But it is almost a falling sensation that you have to do because of the way that your weight balance is. But it still works. Level one, take a break. One, two, pivot. Didn't do my rear foot enough that time. Bam, get those hips engaged. Pivot. We got this. Don't get dizzy. Go on in a circle. It's my biggest problem when I work this drill at speed is I start to get dizzy. Twenty seconds till level one comes back in. I'm gonna try the falling one this time. Don't actually drop your hand. Just over exaggerating so you can see it. Like so. Didn't actually step that time. All right, level one, back in. Level two, take a break. One, two, pivot. One, two, step pivot. One, two, pivot. One, two, step pivot but even if you're just pivoting in place still drop that weight keep that center of balance low all right got about 30 seconds left keep it up balls of the feet nice and light almost there Come on, four seconds. 
time. Nicely done. Next one, probably a little more challenging for you, inside pivot. So it's gonna be two, three, we, which we've done, then pivoting on the inside. So we can either step with that back leg, because our weight is already on the back, like so, or we can step in and pivot around. So two, three, inside pivot. Or with the step. Okay? It's a little trickier. Take it slow. Let's go. Two, three, either step pivot, with the front foot or step shift pivot with the rear foot. Okay. Here we go. Level one, almost at your break. Almost there. Come on, five seconds. Level one, take a break. Here we go. Almost there. Keep going. Get my balance right. Five seconds. So level one comes back in. Do it real slow. Two, three. So I'm bringing, I'm either stepping with that front or bring it back down as I move my back foot into position and then bring that front leg back and have it facing towards my opponent, okay? Two, three, go. 20 seconds. Try it with a step this time. Almost there. Come on. Nice. Time. Next round, we combine the two. So it's gonna be a one, two, pivot to the outside. Two, three, pivot to the inside. Go ahead and take it slow. But as soon as you come from that pivot, from the outside, go on. You can, as soon as you land, you can come with that two and then the three, and then pivot into the one and two. So there doesn't have to be a delay, but it's okay to have a delay to start. But I especially like, I love pivoting the outside and then hitting the two. I also like it with the inside as well. Whew. 
Okay, so one, two, pivot, two, three, pivot. So this is what we would call an opposite pivot, where we're ending, if we're orthodox with the right, but we're pivoting to the left. But you could do, you could do one, two, and pivot to the right as well. But for today, one, two, pivot outside, two, three, pivot inside, okay? But you can do either. So maybe next time you do this, try it the other way and see how that feels. Nope, two, three, back. Lower that weight. Two, three, back. Level one, take a break. Oh no, my timer. I only had four rounds. We'll be okay. One, one, two, pivot. Two, three, pivot. One, two, pivot. Two, three, pivot. Here we go. One, two, I'm gonna pivot with a step. Two, three, I'm gonna step with the rear. One, two, pivot, two, three, pivot, one, two, pivot, two, three, pivot. Back and forth. We got this. Legs are probably killing you. This is the last pivot. We got this. One, two, pivot, two, three, pivot, one, two, pivot, two, three, pivot. Go at your own pace. Level one, come back in. Keep it up. Almost there. 20 seconds. Nice. Four seconds. Time. All right, nice job. Okay, we're gonna go into critical hit, which I forgot to change. Darn it. Remember everything else. Oh, don't crash on me, OBS. Didn't like that. Uh, what should we call these? Arm circles? Sounds right. Circles. Oh. OBS is chugging. All right, I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm gonna move this camera just a smidge so you can see the timer. Oh, I gotta move this. That's the problem. My stand, yeah. There we go, move this back. Oh, that's too much, too much. There we go. All right, so 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, but we're gonna switch what we're doing after 10 seconds. All right. Uh, let's get a ton of rounds, hang on. Set it for 20 rounds. We won't do 20, I don't think. Uh, but 10 seconds and 10 seconds. So what we'll do is we're gonna do something for 10 seconds. We're gonna do another thing for 10 seconds. Then we're gonna rest for 20 seconds, all right? Normally when I do this, it's just back and forth. So it's 10 seconds of this, 10 seconds of this, and you go back and forth and do that like 10 times or something. 
but we'll take some breaks today uh, if you haven't done this before. But it's a really good thing to add to the end of the workout. I saw this on uh, Gabriel Vargas' YouTube channel, where he just does this at the end of every workout to condition the shoulders. And I've been doing it. I've noticed it's already starting to condition my shoulders, help with my endurance, uh, to just be able to throw punches all day. So it's been really nice. First impression, pivots are fun. Yeah, footwork, like once you get it down, it's a lot of fun, right? You're flying around the ring, feeling like Muhammad Ali. And being able to do that and throw punches makes you, you know, unstoppable. It's good stuff. Want to throw two after the pivot? Yeah. Um, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. One, two, pivot, two, three. Do that all the time. That's like a staple for me. Or like one, two, three, pivot, two, three, six, something like that. Feels right. Better shoes definitely helps. Absolutely. All right, so. Arm circles, I'm gonna call them. But arms go straight out, T-pose style. Feet, um, I would say shoulder width apart. Could be closer. But we just make circles with our arms, okay? But we make circles as fast as we can for those 10 seconds. We're only going for 10 seconds, but it's as fast as we can go. I do one round one direction, and then the next time I do it the other direction. It's our straight out, and you are moving as fast as you can for 10 seconds, all right? And then once those 10 seconds are up, you go into a stance and you throw punches. Full extension for 10 seconds, as fast as you can throw. And then we're gonna take a 20 second break, but on my days, after 10 seconds of that, you go right back into these. And you just do that for rounds and rounds and rounds. But today we're gonna do 20 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest. We'll do that four times, all right? So you've probably done this exercise before, but it is as fast as you can go, is the idea, for both sets. Make sure you're in a good stance when you're throwing those punches. And if you want speed in your punches, remember, you gotta have the footwork too. You can't just stand like this. So much slower than if I move my feet. All right, let's do this. Shake it out. So 10 seconds, arm circles, 10 seconds, fast punches. Four rounds, here we go. Starting in 10. Three, two, one, go. Full speed. It's only 10 seconds, but you do this a while and you feel it. Stance, punches. Punches. Rest. It's gonna beep at 10 seconds, but we rest another 10. But if you want, you can just keep going until we're done. You don't have to take those rests. Okay, five seconds. I'm gonna do arms, but I'm gonna do them the opposite direction this time. Fast as I can go, go. Nice, big circles at speed. And then I'm gonna go southpaw and throw punches this time. Switching up both. Time. 20 seconds, that's two rounds, we're halfway done. Ten more seconds to rest, then back into it. Here we go. Go. Bird learning to fly. 
And straight punches. Time. Woo. One more round. Let me cool it down, stretch out, end with some meditation. And we're done. Gonna reverse the direction this time. Three seconds. Go. <laughs> Nearly there. Punches. Time. Woo. Burns the shoulders, but burns good. Oh yeah, abs. Almost forgot. Uh oh, messed that up. Uh, text. Surprise abs. Okay, well, we'll throw in a new one. When I was first learning to jump rope, um, I watched, oh man, I'm blanking. I think they're just called the jump rope guys? Sounds right. Um, but they would have a thing where you go 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, and the fourth round of that would be push-ups. And then the eighth round of that would be this ab exercise. So I still try to throw this one in when I do jump ropes. It's nice. Oh, my mic's on the back. Move it to the side. All right, so for this one, yeah, make sure you hydrate, definitely. So I'm laying all the way down. And it's going to be a crunch to the left side. So I'm bringing my right elbow up to my left knee. And then normal crunch. And then crunch left elbow to right knee. That's one rep. So it's one, one, one is one. That's how I work it. Um, let's see. What's a, I'm trying to think of where I started number wise when I would do this. I mean, in the routine, you just did as many as you could do in 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. Um, so we'll try, we'll try five. Um, we'll see how that goes. All right. Do as many as you can. But it's one to the left, one to the center, one to the right is the idea. And we'll try five reps of that. All right. See how it goes. All right, I'm gonna start in three, two, one. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, that's not too bad. And then we'll do it again. Did we do this one before? We might have. It's possible. 
<clears throat> we'll give ourselves a little bit and then we'll do it again. Take a few more breaths. One more breath. And go. Five, five, five. All right. Yeah, uh, jump rope guys, I think they have a beginning boxer, beginning jump rope routine that incorporates that in, makes them do a full body workout. Nice. I enjoy it quite a bit. And you can, if you have your own timer, you can change it however you want. So when I was learning, especially, I would do 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, because my jumps were so bad. I just didn't feel like I was getting enough jumps in. I'd keep hitting my feet or whatever. Ah, it is tough, but I can already feel it. I can feel my abs getting harder. Ready to take more body blows. All right, good stuff. Stretch it out while we're on the ground. Oh, I almost forgot. Cool down. All right, let's stretch. Sitting down, reaching for both toes, legs spread out. Good job, guys, today. Pivots are not easy to the left. Really test your balance, test your footwork. It's a nice technique to add in and it's fun once you get it down to the right. Oh, definitely need this one. I can feel that. All right, leg over, turn around, stretch. So right leg over the left, left arm over the right and twist around. Switch. Are air jump ropes as good of exercise as regular ones? I have not done any scientific studies. I think it's a very, I think, first of all, one, it's absolutely better than nothing. And I think it is helpful, but I think the, um, in order to get the timing when it comes to moving your feet and your hands, having that actual rope there that you know if you've done something wrong is beneficial. I think cardio wise, it's probably almost the same unless you're using like a weighted jump rope. Um, and then you're working out your forearms more, shoulders, core, like everything gets a little more work. If it's just a normal jump rope, I think cardio is probably very similar, but for boxing, we do it for cardio, but we also do it in order to get our hands and our feet working together. And I think a real rope would be more beneficial for that than an air jump rope. But I don't think, I think if you got nothing where you could do air jump ropes, air jump ropes is better. All right, uh, dun, dun, dun. oh yeah, down to Cobra. Yeah, oh. <laughs> can feel my abs, my upper abs. All right, and back to downward dog. Now jump roping is great. It's really good at teaching you to be light on your feet and to move your feet and your hands together. Relax the left.
Good. Relax the right. Awesome. We are going to come up slow. Ah, good. We're going to rotate our cuff left. My shoulder needs it. Make sure you stretch your shoulder out nice. After those arm circles, switch. Breathing in with the nose and out with the mouth. Deep breath. Let's go ahead and get our neck. Neck down to the left, reach down, arm with the right. Look up. And down. Switch. So reaching down with the left. Neck cocked to the right. Looking up. And down. Good. This might be a good one for meditation. Oh, actually, I went to another thing. I said repeat. I don't know what this is. Let's pause that. All right, I got to do my wall angels. If you have a stretch you need to do, feel free. If you want to do wall angels, it's good to stretch your shoulders, but you need a blank wall. Back of the feet against the wall, butt against the wall, shoulders against the wall. Oh, over. Arms against the wall, head against the wall, reaching up, keeping everything, touching the wall, up as high as I can go, and back down. That's two, that's three, four, five, I'm going for 10, that's six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, I'm gonna take a drink, then I'm gonna sit back down. I'm gonna to try to do some meditation. I turn out the lights. So I do it in a couple different ways. If I'm at the gym, sometimes what I'll do, because I have the window here in the bag, I'll kind of sit in front of it Legs crossed. And I'll do the meditation, but I'll have the bag going in a circle with my eyes closed. And I can just kind of barely see that shadow moving across. Helps give me something to focus on. But normally when I meditate, I just do it in a dark room if I can. Darkish, quiet. I don't do it to music when I do it, but you do whatever works for you. So I sit with my legs crossed, which I'm not very good at, but try to get into relaxed state as possible. <sighs> I relax my arms out. I might do like this kind of thing with my hand feels right. But you can have them open or relaxed. We're sitting up straight. We're not sort of hunched over sitting up so we can get Full deep breaths in and out. And I'm going to breathe in. So there's all different ways you can do the breathing. The way I first learned to meditate is you breathe in until you can breathe in no more with your nose. And then you slowly breathe out with your mouth 
until you can breathe out no more. And we, um, my sensei had sort of a mantra. He would just say the number four over and over again in a very breathy, like almost choking kind of sound up in the throat. I don't know how well you'll be able to hear this, but for him it would go, and it would be slow. Four. That would be him. For me, I just breathe out. Because the key is, my mind is focused on the sound of the breath. Okay? So I don't just breathe silently. There is a noise to it. And it helps me give me focus, something to focus on. Because what's going to happen is, as you're doing this, if you do it for five minutes, 10 minutes, thoughts are going to pop in your head and you want something to be able to return to. That's sort of like the starting level of it, right? Eventually, the way I sort of picture it is those thoughts will come and I kind of put them into a bubble and then I kind of pop them so that they're not there anymore. Now, that was something that it kind of, it took a long time years in order to sort of be able to get into that state of mind um, to be able to make this work. And it doesn't work every time either, but it's just clearing your mind, being able to exist only in the moment, being able to exist only with your breath and being able to let any thoughts that come sort of dissipate and pass. You don't have to hold on to any of them. That's sort of the basic idea behind it. So we're sitting down, comfortable, but upright. Head looking forward, otherwise relaxed. And I'm gonna set a timer. Set it for five minutes. And we're just going to go. We're just going to go like that with nothing but our breath. If you want to, um, you can turn me down if my breathing distracts you. We would do it in a room full of students. It was never much of an issue. But if it is an issue for me, you can turn me down for the next ten, five minutes. Set your own timer. We'll come back and we'll be done. All right. Let's start in 10 seconds. Begin.
and time. Ah, <sighs> all right. Feel much more relaxed. Heart rate's low. Feels good. It's good to be able to find just five minutes a day. Just be yourself with your breath. Try to empty your mind. Deep breathing. I'll do that throughout the day. Oh in smaller intervals, just when I have moments, but it's nice. It's a nice way to end every workout. Just a deep meditation. Ah, <sighs> all right. Well, if you are still with me and haven't fallen asleep, which I've done a few times meditating, thank you so much for joining me today for Pivots. It was a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Hope you got a workout in for today. And you have another workout you can go back to in the future. Come back to it. Continue to build these skills or just take rounds from each of them and build your own to have some variety. <sighs> We're building up a toolbox and we can pull those out whenever we need them. It's a basic idea. Excellent job today. Not an easy thing to do. If you felt like you struggled, that is completely normal. Don't feel bad. I struggled tremendously uh, first learning pivots. I'd say the number one thing is make sure you're low enough and make sure you're in a good balanced stance to start. And then it just sort of comes from there. It's a lot of fun today. Hope you guys have a lovely weekend. Hope you can join me again next Saturday uh, for another round of Roll with the Punches. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. I will try to reply to you there or reply in next week's stream as well. Ah, <sighs> Feeling relaxed, feeling good, ready to enjoy the day. Thanks, guys. Get out there, roll with the punches. See you next time.